This is a stick-up. This man is being robbed. In most types of crime, the criminal takes your money by pointing a gun or hitting you over the head. But in consumer fraud, the criminal must persuade you to voluntarily go along. To become a consumer fraud victim, you have to agree to be robbed. I went along with them all the time. They knew what chains to pull. They knew what would excite me. He was such a gentleman and he had such a nice voice and, and uh, really sold me on it. Whether it's over the phone, at your door, over the internet, or through the mail, hucksters take more than $40 billion a year from their victims. How much money did you lose? $300,000. At least $40,000. Then I sent $2,000. Then I sent $3,000. I just whipped out my checkbook and wrote a check for $20,000. What makes a person write a check to a criminal who may be thousands of miles away? These tactics are so powerful. They use them with such intensity that it is difficult to say no. Anthony Pratt-Canis is a professor of psychology at the University of California. He's a leading researcher and author on the science of persuasion. The research conducted by Dr. Pratkanis and his colleagues has identified common psychological tactics that con artists use in their scams. These strategies tap into our deepest emotional needs. Some of the most common are phantom fixation. The criminal invents a prize or reward. The chance to win is so attractive and compelling that you ignore your own good judgment. Social proof. If everyone agrees, it must be good. Authority. The person or company pitching you is someone to be trusted. Scarcity. If you don't take this deal, you'll lose out and never get another chance. These strategies are also used by legitimate businesses to sell their products. Once you learn these psychological tactics, you'll see them all around you. They're the foundation of modern advertising. But in the hands of con artists, this knowledge is a powerful weapon for fraud. Joe Sherman lost most of his life savings to a direct mail marketing scam. Millions of Americans open envelopes like this every day, mailings that imply that you've won or are about to win a sweepstakes prize. All you have to do is buy something, magazines, household items, whatever. Joe bought into one company's fraudulent program. For seven years, he placed orders two or three times a week and filled his house with mail order items. Filling up the basement with boxes, stuff I couldn't use, stuff I couldn't even give away, practically. While Joe's collection of trinkets was growing, his nest egg was rapidly shrinking. Joe was spending big money. At least $40,000. At least that. Because my, my, uh, the checking account was $49,000 when I started out, and I ended up with about four or five at the most. So it all went down the drain to those people. Joe had fallen prey to phantom fixation. He'd become obsessed with seeing his name on the big check. A phantom is something that you'd like, but is completely unavailable. And that phantom is dangling out there for you. The phantom is most often a prize or reward that's so great you can't help but want it and you start dreaming about it, you start desiring it, you start salivating. This is what you want. It's human. I thought I'd win a prize. I, I thought, I sure as heck I would win a prize. But I'd... The swindler wants to focus attention away from reality and create a compelling illusion for the victim. With his advancing age, Joe felt he didn't have many shots left at the brass ring. Even as he lost month after month, he believed buying into the sweepstakes was his best and maybe only chance to hit the jackpot. This last chance mentality is one variation of the scarcity pitch. Scarcity also works to inflate the perceived value of scams and to put time pressure on the victim to make a decision. And you play every hand. For over 10 years, con man Stephen Michaels ran a gold coin scam where he sold coins for hundreds of times their real value. He used phony scarcity to inflate the price. Now, John, back in 1860 from the Philadelphia Mint, there were 22,675 of these coins minted. Of those 22,000, only four have survived. Only four, for God's sakes. Just four remain at this grade. 
Notice what it does. It tells your mind it's scarce, it's rare, must be valuable, and it tells your gut panic. If you don't get that coin, you are going to be out a great deal. Uh, in that presentation, the coin was being sold to the victim for $3,100. The real value of the coin was about $300. The tactic of authority is a strong persuader in many scams. The con artist wants to appear to be someone you can trust. I'd be on the phone with the victim purporting to be the president of a bank, and uh, in all actuality, I'm at a payphone uh, craving cocaine. Bart Chamberlain is a convicted telephone con man. Over the years, he claimed to be various vice presidents, bank managers, even FBI agents. And because he set up the authority from the start with all the trappings, all the fancy titles, he's able to then rely on that to tell the person what to do. I'm with American Recovery here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The reason for the call, sir, through, through action from the U.S. Attorney's Office in conjunction with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, uh, subsequent seizures of property and auctions therein. So I guess the reason they, they follow the instructions is because they thought that they were talking to someone in authority, a bank president, an executive vice president of a big corporation, uh, a U.S. attorney, an FBI agent, whoever it was, it was a person in a position of authority. And they didn't, once they, if they believed that I was who I said I was, and they, they, would, they would act accordingly. Chamberlain would take on any role he could think of to help him make his scams more believable. Congratulations, you've walked away with the biggest award we've ever given away. Charlie Miller here, Executive Vice President of, of Principal Marketing. I want to congratulate you personally on your award. Mr. Jones, my last, my last name is Jones, too. I'm Mr. Robert Jones from Mobile, Alabama. I'll be coming out to your house personally to take photographs of you. Congratulations. Even jail walls didn't stop Chamberlain from projecting authority. After his arrest, he used his telephone privileges to make more calls from payphones inside the jail. The $20,000 I told you about, I did it while I was in custody. How did that work? That's tricky, isn't it? Well, basically, I had uh, I, I called the gentleman up, uh, collect. I told him I was a, a, uh, I was on my weekend warrior duty as a U.S. marshal at the local jail. Mr. Jones, this is Jim O'Neill here. I'm calling you collect down from the county jail. I'm down here this weekend doing my, my weekend warrior duty as a U.S. marshal. The reason for the call and the, the urgency that necessitated I call you over the weekend collect is that I've spoken to our corporate headquarters out in New York and our accounting firm in Los Angeles, and it's my great pleasure to let you know that by next Tuesday or Wednesday, you will in fact receive your cashier's check for $225,000. Now, there is one final amount of business that I have confirmed through our general accounting office in Los Angeles. I want you to write this down. We are going to need you to go ahead and send out $20,000 to cover you for everything that, that prior to this point has been overlooked. And I had him send uh, $20,000 in cashier's checks to a third party who from there handled it for me. A scam artist, the economic fraud criminal, will take any role they need to take to get you in a role to do exactly what they want. Authority is also projected in the sophisticated mailers sent out by scammers. The mailings look very official, very real with their certificates and seals. Typically, they'll also contain the element of social proof, the idea that other people are doing this and winning. Joe Sherman saw this list of winners. It, it made me feel good because I could see other people were winning. Why? I thought maybe I could win once. Social proof is a simple rule that we have in our head. If everybody agrees, it must be good. When seen from the outside, these tactics are easy to spot. So how do victims lose their life savings to scams? When people say, I would fall prey to that. They're not inside the situation. They're not on the phone. They're not having their emotions played with, their thoughts manipulated. And so they see it from the outside and say, oh, that's, that's a ploy. But on the inside, it doesn't feel like a ploy. It feels special. It feels like I'm making an important step in my life. It feels like I'm about ready to win a prize. It feels like I'm, I'm about ready to, to get a great investment. I wanted to keep you under the ether. And uh, I knew that one day you were going to come out from under the ether. And so I would want to uh, try to load you too soon and too often. Successful persuasion isn't limited to these four tactics. Briefly, here are four more to watch out for. Reciprocity. 
The scammer will offer you something, like a small free gift or a free analysis of your investment portfolio. The criminal is hoping you'll then feel an obligation to him. Another tactic is similarity. The criminal will pretend to share your values and experiences in the hope that you'll think of him as a friend. Consistency. The criminal traps you with your own words. For example, if you agree you need a balanced investment portfolio, the con man will say that his product provides such balance. You can't say no without feeling like a hypocrite. Contrast. The criminal contrasts their offer against a much higher value. It seems like you're getting a great deal. A great place to see multiple persuasion tactics at work used by a legitimate business are the television home shopping channels. We've created our own parody version so you can try your hand at spotting tactics. See how many you can find in the Smart Shopping Network. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that I have never seen anything that we have ever offered here on the Smart Shopping Network that is getting the response we are getting tonight for the miracle shim. Look at that. Isn't that attractive? And if you have a chair or a table at home that's a little tipsy, and I bet a lot of you do, there is no better product you can find than the Miracle Ship. Now, look at this uh, chair here. A little tipsy, isn't it? You probably have one like it. But you just slip one of these little beauties right under that chair or table leg that's not quite touching the floor as well as the others, and voila, problem is solved. Now, isn't that something you need just about every day? Yeah, I know I do. These are the same shims used in the White House, uh, Buckingham Palace, the Taj Mahal has lots of them, and all of Donald Trump's homes to every single one of them, and he has a lot of them. You know, Princess Diana, it is said, would not sit at a table until it had been specially leveled with miracle shims. She had a guy with her, went with her all the time, he had a bag full of shims. True story, true story. Now that is class. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. You cannot find Miracle Shim in the stores. You just can't. They're not available in stores. They're not available from anywhere but right here, right now, from me. And they're not going to be here long either, believe me. If you were lucky enough, though, to find them, you would expect to pay over $200 for a set like the one we are offering here tonight. But that's not what you will pay if you order right now. No, we are offering the Miracle Shim for just $49.90. Did you hear what I said? Or five easy payments of just $9.98. Now that is more than half off the list price. And again, it is just $9.98 regardless of whether you want the cedar, the pine, the oak, or the hickory. Now that is just unreal. I have these at my house. I also gave a lot of them as Christmas gifts this year too. My mom loves hers. You know what? She got the cedar set and she doesn't have any more tipsy chairs or tables. She also doesn't have any more moths. <laughs> okay, I'm told the hickory now is really selling like hotcakes. So uh, let's take a look at the counter and, whoa, my goodness, over 12,000 sold just since I've been on the air. These sets sold out completely last time we had them on the air, so I'm not surprised by that. We have got uh, Bernie from Normal, Illinois on the line. How are you, my friend? Hi. I just called to say that I love my Miracle Shims. Do you now? I just bought three more of them tonight. Whew, three of them. Yeah, and my neighbor's trying to get through to you right now to buy some. Well, you better hurry, because I'm told the cedar just sold out. I bought one for my wife. Our anniversary's coming up. Well, your wife has herself one thoughtful husband. Yeah, well, you know, it sure beats buying a new dining room set. Well, thank you, Bernie. And, you know, he raises a very good point, folks. New dining room set? Several hundred dollars. You want to impress your friends. You want to feel real elegance in your life. You want to sit at your table or sit on your chair feeling like Donald Trump. Well, with the Miracle Shim, you can. For only five easy payments of $9.98, as the kids say, that's a no-brainer. But I'm, I'm being told now the Miracle Shims are all sold out. They are all gone, except you know for this one here under the chair. Oh, wait a minute, I just thought of another one we've got right under the table here. We'll sacrifice that, but you better call now before it's gone, too. How many persuasion tactics could you spot? Here are a few examples. Here's scarcity. As the items are X'd out, you feel more pressure to buy the ones that are left before they're gone, too. Here's social proof. The counter shows all the other people who've bought the Miracle Shim. 
If other people are buying it, it must be good. Here's authority. The TV host says he's never seen a more popular product, so it must be good. Here's more scarcity. The timer ticking down means you don't have much time before you could lose out on this buying opportunity. You get the idea. AARP is working to empower you with the best defense of all, awareness. That's why we've developed the Fraud Watch Network, an online resource to fight fraud at www.aarp.org forward slash Fraud Watch Network. On the website, you'll find the latest information on current scams and the tools you'll need to fight back against fraud. You can register to receive up-to-the-minute updates from the Fraud Watch Network to protect yourself and your loved ones from being taken. Visit aarp.org forward slash Fraud Watch Network and sign up today. Finally, after viewing this video, share your knowledge with family and friends. Together, we can all be fraud fighters.